Sir, I've read you what your department promised, and it is inadequate, and I realize that contempt is not a big deal to our attorney general, but it is important that we have proper oversight. You don't want to go there, buddy. Right. So, you don't want to go there, okay? I don't want to go there? No. About the contempt? You should not assume that uh, that is not a big deal to me. I think that it was inappropriate. I think it was unjust. But never think that that was not a big deal to me. That was Attorney General Eric Holder angry over the way his actions have been characterized. Meanwhile, Holder still has not supplied the gentleman or the American people with the documents requested. We don't want to go there with Holder knowing about the ATF running guns into Mexico and then lying about it. Attorney General Eric Holder was sent briefings on the controversial Fast and Furious operation as far back as July 2010. That directly contradicts his statement to Congress. Listen to what Holder told a Judiciary Committee hearing on May 3rd this year. I'm not sure of the exact date, but I probably heard about Fast and Furious for the first time over the last few weeks. Yet internal Justice Department documents show that at least 10 months before that hearing, Holder began receiving frequent memos discussing Fast and Furious. Don't go there with Holder wanting drones for the same unaccountable ATF. Don't go there with Holder wanting gun owners to wear trackable bracelets. Don't go there about Holder deflecting press questions about the death of a man the FBI confused with Timothy McVeigh. But do let Holder go there saying that he is the only AG to suffer this kind of treatment. Unprecedented, unwarranted, ugly, and divisive adversity. And if you don't believe that, you look at the way, and forget, forget about me, forget about me. You look at the way the Attorney General of the United States was treated yesterday by a House committee. Had nothing to do with me, forget that. What attorney general has ever had to deal with that kind of treatment? Insanely, Eric Holder has come out and said it's basically racism that people are treating him with, quote, disrespect when he's ignored congressional subpoenas for four years. And he says no attorney general has ever been treated like this. I could dig up three today when I saw this clip in a few minutes online in the last hundred years that served prison time. The last one was John N. Menchel, served 19 months and died in prison due to his involvement in the Watergate affair. He was sentenced to prison in 1977, serving 19 months. I mean, I've got the attorney general saying that never happened. Of course, this guy's as white as a snowflake, as bald as a cue ball, and as goofy looking as a rattlesnake. The point is that... That's all they've got now is race card. You can find more reports at InfoWars.com. Peaches Geldof, the Paris Hilton of the UK, was found dead at the age of 25 of unexplained and sudden causes. There was no suicide note, no hard drugs on the scene, and autopsy reports so far are inconclusive awaiting toxicology reports. But was Peaches Geldof targeted for exposing pedophilia or something more sinister? Last year, Geldof tweeted the names of two crazed groupies who allegedly agreed to let singer Ian Watkins of the group Lost Profits sexually abuse their children. Watkins pled guilty to 13 counts of child sexual assault, including two counts of attempting to rape a baby. Geldof, who is a reformed wild child and mother of two, insisted that these monster moms be named because the press refused. She sent out a tweet revealing the names of the mothers and then promptly deleted it after she was informed that she might be investigated by police for inadvertently identifying the child victims involved, a crime in the UK. But was Peaches ready to reveal more? She's not the first person to die under mysterious circumstances after exposing pedophilia. BBC presenter Jimmy Seville died before he could pay for his crimes as part of an organized elite pedophile ring linked to the UK government, the BBC, and the royal family. A theory following the death of Princess Diana was that she had knowledge of the powerful VIP pedophile ring and was about to blow the lid on what she knew. There's a still unsolved case of BBC investigative journalist Jill Dando, who was shot point blank outside of her home. It's rumored that she may have uncovered the VIP pedophile ring operating within the BBC and was about to expose it. There's also the mysterious death of Georgia State Senator Nancy Schaefer and her husband, immediately dubbed a murder-suicide by the media. 
Nancy was actively exposing corruption within the Department of Family and Child Services, including actions by the DFCS director in the county where she lived, specifically in Georgia. Former Senator Nancy Schaefer had found during the last few years that DFCS housed children in a foster home with a known pedophile who molested the children. Habersham County failed to remove six children from a home where they are being abused and tortured. And Georgia also turned two girls over to a California father who had a pornographic video business. Schaefer made it clear that organizations procure their underage victims by making children wards of the state, such as convicted pedophile Jerry Sandusky's nonprofit, The Second Mile. But there's another curious twist linking Peaches to occult groups that perform ritualistic child abuse. Peaches was very interested in ghosts and the occult, and recently snapped a selfie that she claimed revealed the ghostly hand of a woman who had died in her home. Her death comes about a year after publicly announcing her initiation into the occult secret society Ordo Templi Orientis. On March 11, 2013, Peaches uploaded this photo to Instagram. What's the first rule of Fight Club? You do not talk about Fight Club. Geldof's Instagram snap caused a surge of interest for the secret society. It's based on Aleister Crowley's Thelema, the OTO revolves around the concept of sex magic to attain spiritual illumination. The OTO considers itself to be the true heir of the Knights Templar and the Bavarian Illuminati. Crowley's text also contains several thinly veiled allusions to human ritual sacrifice to attain magical potency. Crowley's motto, do what thou wilt, has even influenced Illuminati puppet Jay-Z, who has repeatedly appropriated Crowley's quotations, including wearing this t-shirt emblazoned with the words. Aleister Crowley, once dubbed the wickedest man in the world, reveled in sadomasochistic sex rituals and the use of hard drugs. These are the same fertility rituals and creepy child sacrifice themes we've seen before at the Rothschilds masquerade. Geldof defended Crowley on her social media accounts, calling him a beautiful writer and thinker, and posting photos of her bookshelves stacked with volumes of Crowley's work. We may never know if Peaches Geldof was murdered for revealing too much or if she was offered up as a human sacrifice, but either way, she died at a very young age under mysterious circumstances and under the spell of an elite secret society. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.